The absorption law is really where we see a lot of the action in an exam situation. This law states that A or A and B, in brackets, can be simplified down to A. Likewise, A and A or B in brackets can also be simplified down to A. The brackets are important here as they can change the meaning of the expressions. But what that means is that in these two circuit diagrams, we can remove the costly logic gates and simply run the A cables across instead. Let's take a look at the truth tables and, nice and simple this time, starting with the left expression, when A and B are set to zero, the output to A and B is zero, meaning that the only thing that has any impact on the OR gates is the second A term, in this case, giving us a zero overall. When we turn A on, it still gives a zero output from the AND, but the OR uses A as an input, and this is one. The output is then also one, now, interestingly, it's the opposite where A is off and B is on, mainly because our AND is still giving us zero. So with A set to zero, there are no ON signals to activate the OR gate, giving us zero. Finally, all the ONES give us a ONE output, because the OR gate has two ONE signals going into it, giving us a ONE overall. We can see that the final output is identical to the values of A given to it. Therefore, the rule is true and we can replace all that costly circuitry with a cheaper cable and, most importantly, your expression in the exam can blast through simplification. But what about the right-hand expression where the AND and the OR gates are switched? Well, when both A and B are set to zero, we get a zero out of the OR gate, which means that the AND gate's giving us a full-on zero. When A is one, that's enough to get a one out of the OR gate, the AND gate then gets two ONE values and produces a ONE output. When A is off, we can see that regardless of what happens with the OR gate, the AND gate can't produce anything other than a zero. And then finally, when both are on, we have an embarrassment of ONES coming through, giving us a ONE as the output. Again, the final column and the A column are now identical, so boom, it's just A. Let's take a look at that in its natural habitat then. Here, our expression reads D and C or D in brackets, or not D. Firstly, we should chunk it so we know what we're working with. Those brackets mean that the C or D is chunked, and then the AND groups can be separated by the other OR, and it's all combined into one big super OR group. Remember, the rules only apply to the chunks that they're in. Shocking absolutely no one, the absorption law is present. Wow! In an example about that law too, who would have thought it? D and C, or D in brackets, is simplified to the repeated terms, that's D. So the entire expression becomes D or not D. This should ring a bell. No, it's not Shakespeare, it's the OG complement law. Anything or not itself becomes one. So that entire expression is just one. Pop another one there for us. Cracking. So. Here we're dealing with B or A and D and B in brackets. Let's chunk that way. We've got our ANDs in brackets as one expression, B as the other, joined with an OR. The absorption law applies here too, so that entire thing is just the repeated term B, and that's B for blooming fantastic. That's it for this video. Don't forget to like, comment and subscribe to get more computer science content.